Cool. So, this may or may not become a podcast, and it's born of Mike and I are gathered here at Mike's beautiful house. It looks a lot more beautiful than I'm guessing uh, my house would look if I welcomed you. Uh, you've done a sterling job here, mate, making it look beautiful. Um, <laughs> it's only this room I've really done. Yeah. yeah um, go on. So, it's born of, and by the way, if you hear any kind of distracting noises in the background, that is probably Oscar either, you know, chewing on a bone or scratching on the floorboards or just for attention. getting some love from Mike, yeah. <laughs> um, it's been born of, like, we are, we're gathered here to flesh out what is the, you know, grand slam, you know, world-changing offer for Greater Life. And full disclosure, Mike and I have been trying to work out what is our offer for Greater Life for the best part of a year. And it's brought us, and I think this is one of the things, it's like, it's brought us face to face with our stuff, you know. And another word for stuff has got less letters and ends with T and begins with SH and has an I in the middle, right? Um, so we've had to go, all right, why, why, are we, why are we failing in some way to execute it? What's going on? And you and I have both had stuff come up, right? And we've also seen in some of our founder members stuff coming up. Okay. And alongside some of the things with Greater Life, I've been doing some work for an organisation called the Neo Shamanic Society, which helps people to find purpose, become healers, you know, deal with their stuff, aka SH1T, right? And the reason I wanted to chat right now is because we, as we've explored this over 50 space, there's been this term of gerontolescence, right? Which is almost like a second adolescence where you're working out who you're going to be, what are you going to do in your second act of life, right? I think the thing I've been pondering is you and I always established, and I've read it in your newsletter today, greater life as not just purely business stuff, right? There's yeah. the personal side of things as well, right? And you, I, and some of our founder members have really had to face up to changing old patterns, right? And challenging stories that, you know, have gone unchallenged for years, right? Um, you yourself have discovered how important it is to have a home, right? Um, oh, God, yeah. There was some really, you know, like, being real, like, you went through some traumatic incidents, not, you know, myself recently, right? Yeah. And I think that's the thing that's been, I've been chewing on is, this trauma with a big or a small T, right? And there's other words we could use for it, but we can't ignore the reality of it. And it got me thinking that we had, like if you think of your parents, your grandparents, essentially we had an entire generation that was unbelievably traumatised by the two wars, mm. who were then trying to raise children and... You know, you and I know the like the impact of that, right? That you know, traumatized people trying to raise people create more, tra you know, hurt people, hurt people, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, I guess it, it, it struck me that part of the and leaving the kind of podcasting aside here, right? Like, so you and I are coming into a conversation now. We've got almost like a triple whammy of industrial revolution, factory based schooling, yeah. right? Generational trauma. And internal and external ageism, all of which putting some kind of like glass ceiling on, here's what might be possible for you. Here's the, like, here's the stories that you could create. Um, and so I guess that's kind of, that's what I'm chewing on is like the phrase that's come through is like initiation for the greater generation, right? Of if you want to break through conditioning, it requires going to those like challenging places like you've been willing to at times, right? You know, both you and I have shed tears at times, right? Mm. And that's it's, it's, it's a tough sell. But if I look at the stuff that Neo-Shamanic Society is doing, I said, I said to you, like, the average age of the people on that is 56, mm -hmm. right? So there's something about people recognising what I've done so far in my life has got me where I'm going. I now need to look at some of the stuff I haven't been willing to look at so far. Um, and so I guess, like, I guess I'm just wondering... If you've got any thoughts about this, yeah, this kind of unholy trinity of, you know, post-war trauma, 
types of schooling that said, you go to school, you get your job, you get, you get your grades, you get a job. Like, rather than going, what are you passionate about? What are your gifts? How do we help you develop your gifts? Like, the, 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 there may still be the story of, oh, well, I can't do that, or that's not possible because of what you were taught at school, what your parents just had to do just to survive and so modelled for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the ageism stuff as well of like, oh, well, you're over, I'm over the hill now, it's too late now. So yeah, like, does, it, does that kind of spark anything for you, especially like based on what you wrote in the newsletter today? It, it sparks a load of stuff, but I mean, like, it's really topical today as well, and, uh, and I'd have to sit down and hunt through on the computer. Um, but uh, today there's been a whole load of stuff, um, people having a go at a young girl right. uh, who's just started work, and she's having to work nine to five, and she's going, oh my God, is that going to be, you know, is, this, is this my life? Yeah, at the end, she's 20 years old, I think, yep. from memory. Um, and there's loads of people piling in and telling her, oh, you know, like, yeah, this is reality, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. What's really interesting to, to me are yeah. the ones that are actually coming along and saying, no, hold on a second, this doesn't have to be your life. Yeah. Yeah, so you're right to question this. Yeah. Um, they, yeah, the majority of people were thinking that she was working from an entitled place. Mm. Mm. Um, and, uh, and actually, when you sort of spin that on its head, and say, you know, like, yeah, and question that nine to five you know, at such a young age. I think that's fantastic. And then uh, this afternoon, I've been talking to a lady this afternoon. We, uh, 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 th- this started, she put a, a post on the Facebook and Instagram, um, uh, like an incredibly annoying soundtrack to it, but her experience of online dating. Okay. And uh, or or just one mini experience of online dating. Um, I put a reply because you know just recently I've been looking at Tinder and Facebook dating, and uh, and oh my god, it is just diabolical. People you know like putting a picture of their their dog, and no other information at all, and yeah, and long term relationship they're right. looking for, and it's like well hold on, I want to know something about you, and I don't want to see a picture of your dog or yeah. you from twenty years ago. So uh, Omar and I were talking this afternoon about you know this big problem where you know people are um, you know people are obviously coming back into the dating pool in their fifties you know fifties and sixties and, and so on either from divorce perhaps or from um, uh, you know being widowed or, or whatever you know for various reasons and they're coming back in you know armed with absolutely no idea what to do mm. yeah so there's a couple of things and I mean and again they're, they're sort of Working on old style thinking. I mean, like old style thinking. I remember Thomas Power, you know, said, you know, the internet will change people's ways of thinking from being closed, selective, and controlling to being open, random, and supportive. But people are still working from that position of fear, that wow. closed position wow. of fear. So that that's amazing. Like, so there's so much in what you shared there as well. Like, that um, that some people were responding to this young girl from open, supportive, etc. Uh-huh, exactly. And some were still stuck in that, well, this is reality, and, you know, and yeah. operating from those old stories. And um, there's so much in that, because what immediately sparks for me is you were saying that, um, you, know, you and I discussed this idea of 10x is easier than 2x, right? Yeah. Um, really powerful frame. And I've seen a few other people posting up about it. Uh, it's a book by Dan Sullivan. Um, and in it, he talks about sh- going for the life that you want, not the life where you're just surviving for your basic needs, but like, what's the most inspiring things that you would want? And that we've been conditioned to think, oh, well, you know, either if I go for what I want, that's less for other people. It's like this, again, part of this, this unholy trinity is the stories of scarcity, that yeah. more for me means less for you and stuff, right? Which is just a fundamentally flawed model. Look it's at nature, nonsense. right? It's nonsense. And so I really take from that, like, the... the I was like, well, what do I want? Well, I don't want to have to let my home out for Airbnb unless it's my absolute choice. It's, I've noticed, like you, how much it's affected me. Just the fact of today, I, I messaged this one guy who'd uh, booked in and I'd forgotten to take my listing off. Mm. And he happened to book in. And I messaged him saying, look, <coughs> please, can, like, if it's possible to cancel, like, if it, if, I'll, you know, I'll make it worth your while or whatever because I just want my space back. I want my space back so that as I now build my momentum out of coming out of a bit of a hole and hitting a bit of a wall, I, I've, got a, I've got a launch pad to dive into greater mm-hmm. life and to really build, right? I've got a space where my kids and I, for the next three months, can just bed into a beautiful winter space and, you know, do all the Christmassy, Halloweeny stuff that, like, they absolutely love. And that's what I want. And I, you know, but I also want 
a garden that's not a nightmare. And I, you know, I, I want these things. And you and I were discussing uh, another book by Dan Sullivan, is Who, Not How. Mm. We've been discussing this as well. Like, I've been thinking, that one part of that way that old conditioned thinking shows up for me is, oh, if you want something doing, you've got to do it yourself. Well, look, look at the way that all the great businesses get built. Like, you know, and you know, Richard Branson says, you know, he's, he 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 gets an idea, he gets it going, and then he tries to find the smartest person who's even better than he is and lets him run the business. Or let her well, yeah, run the business. I remember years and years and years ago um, watching a documentary about Branson, and he was asked, what's, "What's the best thing about being rich?" And he said, "The very best thing about being rich is I can have an idea in the morning, and somebody else is putting it into operation yeah. by the afternoon." Yeah. And I don't think you necessarily have to be rich to achieve that. No. Yeah, it helps. But but that but also certainly yeah, even, other people doing things. Even that is a frame of reference that's new thinking. Yeah. Right. Um, or not necessarily new thinking because look at all the folks who were running the factories, owning the factories. They were like, we're going to put other people to work for oh, us. Oh, yeah, you know. Exactly. And um, so just to come back, I want to close that loop on the the young girl. It's like I've been thinking, what do I truly want for my life? Letting go of all the conditioning of it's selfish to go for what you want, right? Um, and she's saying, is this my life? Is this what life is about? Mm-hmm. And people kind of chime in and going, oh, it's just reality. What comes alive for me there is like, perhaps this is the role of the greater generation. So if you're hearing this for the first time, the greater generation is what Mike and I are kind of terming this incredible group of over 50s who are either starting businesses, growing businesses, getting arrested to, you know, because they're taking a stand for climate change or any number of other causes, right? That there is this generation who are like I am and I saw it I can't remember who it is so forgive me if you're listening to this um you know the kind of hashtag on LinkedIn is like not done yet right and it's this yeah. idea that uh, you know one of our founder members Tina climbed Kilimanjaro twice in her 60s like you know literally screw being over the hill right um so it's, it, there is this this generation this greater generation who are in a position to live for the next 30 40 years like 100 you know a life to 100 actually with a good quality of life, is not, not pie in the sky. No, it's okay. not anymore. I mean, like, yeah, and, by no means. And so could this generation actually be the one who helps this young girl to actually go, yeah, this is the life we could create. We, don't, we, we adopted this, this is what reality is, because the Industrial Revolution robber barons created an education system to populate their mm-hmm. factories that told us this is what reality has to be. You show up, you do your nine to five, then you go home with, for your job, which is just over broke. You earn just enough for your needs, not for anything you might really truly want. So there's something in, like, this young girl was like, her, it's almost like, it's not about her being entitled, it's perhaps her soul going, that, that life is, is so much more than this. really has. Yeah, I've had a discussion today with one of my daughters. I won't tell you too much yeah. to about where it went. But um, but we, part of what we were talking about was that, you yeah, know, think about what you want rather than what you think you should be doing. Yes. Um, and if you don't know what you want, start querying the things that are out there until you figure out what you want. And I think this is actually really fundamentally important because, you yeah, know, we are... We're, we're squashed, our, our ambitions and, and, and everything else that goes with it are squashed from a very early age. So that, that's yeah, the thing. And, and, and this is, yeah, literally from the age of, I've seen something today about genius. I mean, like, yeah, all of this is just lighting up at the moment, but about genius. So um, kids at three years old are 80, 85%, 90% genius level. Yep. Yeah, and as they go through sort of five years, seven years, nine years, ten years, that level of genius actually starts to disappear. Yeah, so that by the time they've left the education system, they're no longer at genius level. Yeah. So genius level being that, you know, that point at which you know, they, they believe anything is possible. Yeah, they, um, yeah, they, don't, uh, they, they work without boundaries, pretty yes. much. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and that, yeah, that, I think, is... We, we've lived this society for the last 150-odd years. Yeah, the, uh, the Industrial Revolution, the last great revolution... And uh, I've been talking about the digital revolution for the last 10 years or more, but I think it's actually more than just the digital revolution. Yeah. I think that digital tools are enabling something that's... Is it, is it a purpose crazy. revolution? Is it a purpose revolution? It could be. I mean, like, yeah, maybe we should call it the greater revolution. Yeah, yeah because yeah. there is something else that, yeah, that I think is coming along, whether it's young people querying, is this all there is? 
Yeah. Yeah. Young people being told, no, you can't be an influencer, you can't be a videographer, you can't be a whatever. Yeah. And me thinking, well, why can't you be? Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you know, this, this thinking that you have to knuckle down and, you know, like, you know go to a place of work that uh, you don't enjoy, yeah. you know, to be able to, to, to live in the house that you want to be spending time in. I mean, like, it's nonsense. Yeah. Things is not, it's not an either or. There is some deep wisdom from that, like, if you, for example, if you want to be a marathon runner, there's no hiding from the sweat of turning yeah, up every day and training, right? Yeah. And that's not always going to be fun, okay? So there is that piece. And it's like, if you, you know, you look at someone like, say, Ed Sheeran, you know, just because, you know, he happens to have some history with him, right? Of, if you look at, he's, you know, he's, you know, if anyone was living their purpose abundantly, here he is, like, you yeah. know, inspiring millions, selling out Wembley and stuff. You know, in one year, like, so 365 days of a year, the guy played 311 gigs. Mm. Like, so, you know, in terms of putting in the work, I can't imagine that every single one of those gigs, he was like, oh, this, I'm so looking forward to this. But he was doing what was required to, you know, bring his gifts online in the fullest yeah, way. I think it's, uh, there's a difference there, isn't there? There is a difference. You know, like, yeah, I, you know, I've, um, you know, throughout my working career, for the last 30 years, you know, I've, I've run my own businesses. I've been self-employed or whatever. Yeah, there have been times when I've been opening shops that I've worked straight through, you know, literally three days, no yeah. sleep, yeah, you know, just to get a shop open, um, just to make something happen. And and that's putting in the yards, you know, you, you, it is the marathon training, it is all of that thing. Yeah, there's a difference between that and just literally turning up to be there, you know, from nine to five, um, with the expectation that you'll put in another couple of hours with no extra pay, yeah, that's that. I think that kind of thinking. That's what people are starting to challenge. Mm. Yeah, and they're challenging it whether, yeah, yeah, the over fifties, the the, yeah. Yeah, the great retirement, unretirement, etc. That's going on. The rise in self-employment, and the rise in younger people questioning, is this yeah. what life's all about? So it's so I think the. I want to just touch on what you, the, the words you used there. You said our ambitions get squashed from a very young age, yeah. right? And I guess I, I wonder whether, you know, what you literally, what you referenced from Thomas Power of like the, the, the shift, the, the transformation in thinking. And we've seen that within our community, some of our founder members, like because of, you know, we're, we're more kind of, we've, we've been more immersed in the opportunities and possibilities of the digital revolution. Mm -hmm. we've been able to m reflect back and say, well, no, of course you could do that. And they're like, really? Oh, yeah, of course. Because this, 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 this. Oh, I've never... Like, we've literally had the privilege of seeing someone's thinking be upgraded and transformed oh, and expanded yeah, yeah, in yeah. real time, right? And <clears throat> it does make me wonder, though, whether collectively this, this thing of, like, our ambitions are squashed at a very young age m applies more to the over-50s because of this unholy trinity we've spoken about. I think it probably does, George. Then, yeah, you the, know, then let's say, um, you know, my daughter's growing up and she's like, you know, can I be a YouTuber? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, like, if you can pitch to me an idea for your YouTube channel, I'll get you the camera. Like, mm -hmm. whereas if I'm guessing, like, if you'd come to, and this is not this on your parents, because if I'd come to my parents and said the same, I'm like, oh, I don't know, actually, my parents are pretty supportive. But um, the, for a lot of people, Oh, you can't make any money from art, or you can't make any money from being yeah, a, exactly. you know, that, that old line of you can't make any money from X, right? Well, but now we, let's, let's just pause, shall we, for a second. And if anyone epitomizes this new, open, inclusive, supportive way of thinking, is Mr. Beast. Yeah. Right? Of course. Who, um, is the most popular YouTuber, right? Who <coughs> is a multi, 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 multi millionaire. Mm -hmm. And he, his success was born of him and a group of other YouTubers getting together regularly and saying, how can we help each other? Mm. Like that was, so it wasn't literally, it was literally the opposite of, you know, more for me, less for you. It was, how does everyone benefit and grow here? Right. And more particularly, how do we all create a life where we can make money doing what we love? Mm. Um, so I, I think there's something, there's two things that are really powerful in this. I'm kind of wondering, almost like, what do you like? How do we support the greater generation to connect with what they truly want? 
Like, how do we support them to even realise that what they think they might want or think they could have is a glass ceiling imposed by this unholy trinity, right? <coughs> Number one, then how do we create the community and put in place the tools that can support them to then go for the things they really would want? Mm-hmm. But part of that as well is then, like, I don't, I don't know, but there feels like something really important right from the get-go in all of this. I've had the hashtag alpha booms, Right. Alpha, boom, Z, right? Um, which is like, so, you know, you've got Generation Alpha, yeah. Generation Z, right? And the boomers, right? Boomers. And I felt like there's some meeting of, if you look at the people in society who've got time on their hands to do activism and awesome stuff, it's the kind of, as we saw at Falmouth University with the pres- uh, protest recently, right? It's kind of the students and the young people, and it's the people at the other end of the age yeah. spectrum, right? And there's something about... How could we facilitate, how could we be the bridge for the boomers and the Xs to speak with the alphas and the Zs to say, hey, listen, the alphas and the Zs are asking the right questions. But you boomers and Xs, you've got some wisdom about actually how they could make their answers a reality. Is that, yeah, you don't have to turn up and do nine to five all the time. But you know what? If you want to do this thing, one of the best ways to do it long term is to get paid by someone to learn the things you need to learn. Like, mm-hmm. to, and so there's ways to kind of ground some of these really important soul questions that are being asked by the younger generation who are more limitless in their thinking. But how do we take that limitless? How do we take that expansiveness and anchor it into the practical grounded wisdom of here is how you kind of go from A to B that the, the boomers and the exes have, have lived through? Jeez. Um. Tuffy, because you know, I like the idea of the limitless thinking, um, and and the the issue. I mean, and it, it is a big issue, George. Yeah, and as you rightly pointed out, you know, the the people that have been affected by that, uh, you know, that triple whammy of uh, you know, war, famine, when you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, that happened. Uh, you know, from the war, late war education, and yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. The people that have been affected by that. Yeah, and I've, I've lived, you know, like just, you know, like knuckled down, done what they're told and, and carried on, which is the majority. Yeah. Um, how do you, um, how do you open their minds to, how, yeah, how do you open their minds to actually encourage that limitless thinking rather than suppress that yeah. limitless thinking? And I, you yeah. see that, this is what, this is why I feel like this feels like it's got something to do with what we could offer. Yeah. Like, because, you, you know, from Aviva's Midlife Rethink, right? As I was thinking, like, I was even thinking, like, how, how do I even know what I want? I'm quite limitless in my thinking on some levels, but there are some underlying stories of I'm not good enough or I'm not, you know, well, the, all this that. Is the problem. It's interesting. Something else I put, um, was that this morning? I don't know who's tracking me and where I am because I do the newsletters one day and then they get published the next. But um, did you see the um, the article that was in the Times about the 90-something-year-old woman uh, in Tuffnell Park who's now got a 31-year-old lodger? Um, and they've got this amazing relationship. Um, and, uh, and, yeah... Yeah, as far as I can see, it solves a housing problem, it solves a loneliness problem, it's, yeah, there's all sorts of things going on. Yep. Um, and, yeah, and already you've got uh, uh, situations where, you know, like, you know, kids uh, are going into old people's homes um, and, and getting involved in activities in old people's homes. Um, so the old people's home part of it, you know, maybe you know, at, a, at, a, at a greater extreme, but I mean, like, you know, yeah, that connection between young and old. Well, um, Mark Michelson's post today. I haven't seen it, but um, the confluence of ages. Right. Um, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, he's been doing some really beautiful work around yeah. the intergenerational bridging. Exactly around. this. I mean, like, so, so again, yeah, going down that route of, well, crumbs. How do you? How do you encourage that? How do you nurture that? How do you actually sort of take huh. that energy and, and go So here's a question forward then. with it. If part of what we could offer great value to the greater generation, to those who we would want to become paying members of greater life, is to shatter their glass ceilings of their ambition, of mm-hmm. what they think might be possible, is it about supporting them to 
engage with the questions and perspectives of the alphas and the generation Z. Like, how do we, how do we, how do we bring that thinking? And you know, perhaps then you know, conversations with Mark Michelson and others. How do we, how do we sprinkle into the mix of this expanded and upgraded thinking? Um, some of the, you know, the sole questions that this young girl is asking. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a, the other thing I was thinking on this is, um, we can explore this, you know, as we go forward is one of the great ways of, uh, perhaps beginning to connect with what I truly want is to make a giant list of the things I do not fecking want. Yeah. And, the, and, and then flipping that. Right? And yes. So this is an exercise you and I can do is like, cause I'm like, I don't want, I don't want random people in my home anymore. No. No, um, I, I you know what do, what do I want Sorry. what do I want well I, I want a beautiful home that like feels whenever I step into it like I get a boost of energy that's yeah. you know that's the flip of that right I don't want other people's energy in it I want an awesome powerful energy in my home right so um, yeah I've been playing with the idea of and it's you know we're we're like, I can't remember what the, the phrase is we have a kind of negativity bias so mm-hmm. it's much easier for us to identify what we don't want or things that are bad but we can then use that to flip those things into... Ironically, and I, I've had this, you know, we were talking along those lines earlier on, you know, with, you know so I had a conversation with one of my daughters, you know, of taking, you know, the negative stuff and just saying, right, we're going to dump that, we're going to focus on the, you know, like, recognise yep. what's there, the negativity, um, because in recognising it, you can actually then shut the door on it. Yep. You, know, you can put it to bed and say, right, yeah, that's not part of my life. Now I'm going to deal with a bit that, uh, you know, that I really want to, well, to focus on. The other thing to, to invite on that as a possibility with your daughter is to, like, as part of recognising it, list it all out and go, OK. And this is a really powerful thing. There's an amazing book called Time to Think by, um, I think it's Nancy Klein. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> she talks about, it's that, I think it's like an incisive questioning technique where she gets someone who's blocked in their thinking and their creativity to connect with the core assumption about why they're blocked. So it's like, oh, I'm assuming that people won't like me, for example, could be one, right? Mm-hmm. And so she, and then so Nancy Klein's question then is, okay, what, it, what for you is the positive opposite of, oh, I'm afraid people won't like me. And each person's words are going to be slightly different, you yeah. know, because some people might say, oh, that people love me, or some people say that <coughs> people value me, for example, right? But whatever the positive opposite is, so that for your daughter, it could be, here's the list of things that, you know, are the negatives. Well, if those are the negatives that you don't want in your life, what for you is the positive opposite of each of those things? Because mm-hmm. there, then you build a list of the things you really would love to have. Yeah, in your life. which is which is good. I mean, like, yeah, and that's yeah. I was saying, you know, it, you know, when you don't know what you want, yeah, maybe that's the way to actually yeah. decide what it is. It's, that you it's do the way want. to when you know what you don't want. Yeah. The opposite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it could be what you do want. And it, even if it's not exactly the thing, the opposite can at least start the momentum rolling in the direction well, of what you do want. Well, thinking going. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's funny. I'm sitting here looking at uh, this box. Have you seen this before, haven't you? Oblique stretch. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, and that, yeah, does exactly the same kind of thing. Yeah. Because, yeah, like when you, when you ask questions, yeah, all of a sudden answers come along, you yeah, know, one way or another. Yeah. Um, and it is quite, yeah, it's a, it's a question that, mm. yeah, asking questions mm. it's uh, it's you know it's actually getting into that question process anything anything else to kind of like land about this conversation we've had around yeah we first spoke about this i'm not sure it's the exact unholy trinity of like because i don't know if ageism is a thing it is is a part of it but it definitely is it's almost like maybe we, it's like we have the unholy alliance of a screwed up education system that said here is what reality is mm. And we then had the kind of post-war traumatized parenting, right? That meant essentially it was all from the mind because the, like the only, one of the only ways to survive that level of trauma is to shut the heart down. Because if you feel, shut the heart down and shut the body down, which is why, you know, people have such a crazy relationship with food Mm -hmm. because food became a proxy way of showing love. You know, eat what's on your plate. I've cooked this food for you. Is yeah, like exactly. is a way of the the the, exactly. the mum who's been too traumatized by her mum and dad, for what the war did, at least saying here's how I love you, right? Rather than you know opening her heart and saying, I was really upset today and I'm really you know like there's opening the heart requires intimacy. Shoving some food in some front of someone doesn't require intimacy, mm-hmm. but they can both be acts of love, right? Um, and so we have this kind of unho- yeah this unholy alliance of education and post and kind of war trauma basically 
that then I think with the over 50s now is, no, we recognise that's probably squashed their ambitions more than most generations. Mm -hmm. Then when you sprinkle in a good dose of ageism that's been (coughs) internalised and is external as well, right? Then it kind of, it almost like keeps the lid in place or the ageism becomes this lid to stop that um, unholy alliance from being challenged. So anything to kind of land about all of that before we wrap up for the evening? No, I think, um, I mean, coming back to the ageism thing, you know, we are, uh, you know, typically a society, you know, guilty, I mean, eight years of ageism from every end of the spectrum, really. Um, yeah, again, another conversation in the last 24 hours, uh, my youngest daughter, um, about how much she's earning. Right. And I was absolutely gobsmacked. Yeah, she's been paid six pounds something an hour, you know, for, to do a job that if she was a year older, she would wow. be paid yeah. whatever the minimum wage is. Is that, is that even know. legal? It is legal because the minimum age, so the minimum wage is age dependent from the age of 16 to 20 something. So you could be, you know, when you leave school at 16 and get an apprenticeship you know, and, and, and be right. working and earning, learning and what yeah. have you until you're 18. Once you're 18, you know, you're an adult yeah. as far as the law is concerned. So you can go and do what the hell you want. But when it comes to minimum wage, no, so you could be standing literally you near know, on the on the assembly line next to somebody else pushing the same button, yeah, 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 the yeah. same levers, and being paid half the money, and it's quite legal. Wow. And I was I was I was really quite shocked, yeah. to be frank. Especially if you you know I'd imagine she might probably more capable of doing that job than some of the people who are being paid. Oh yeah, more. absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and and you know there's there's also ageism in the kind of. The assumption that this young girl who was pouring out her heart about the nine to five thing, you know, in some way, you know, needed to needed to kind of wake up and you know grow up and all that, yeah, you know, all, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So um, it's, I guess that is the piece. Is like, so yeah, maybe maybe that maybe that's the case. Is like because also here's the thing. Like if we think about this, one of the things of that unholy alliance is like children should be seen and not heard. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So there's the there's ageism implicit in that. So maybe mm-hmm. it is an unholy trinity. Like that. There's a kind of like that. There has been this kind of assumption of seniority equals, cap, you know, capability, um, which is you know fundamentally. Or, or or just that, you know, because you're older, you know, like, you know, people should listen to you. Yeah. You know, the whole thing about respect your elders, yeah. which is good in some respects. I mean, like, yeah, you know, from in terms of eldership. Yeah. But not just because somebody happens to be, you know, one year, five years, ten years older than you. Well, this is the final thing that's like the the, the deep stuff that I I don't I don't know how we'll get into it but because one of the challenges of having a culture that does not have rites of passage and initiation within it right is that there is no sacred way of marking the transition from adolescence to adulthood Mm. and of therefore um, anchoring that you are no longer a child and with that there will be certain responsibilities that you have, but also there will be certain additional respect and opportunities open to you, right? What we have is, um, unfortunately, it is things like, you know, one of the, the big conversations in the US at the moment is around the whole kind of Biden's age and the age of, you know, Pelosi and Trump yeah, and yeah. Biden, all the people running for office. You know, the, the conversation focused on age. What it doesn't focus on is almost like, intellectual age or soul age of like actually what we have is adolescent man boys masquerading as leaders yeah you know boris johnson is a classic example trump again right that these are they're not elders they're They're just they are just adolescents in old bodies and i think this is one of the great um opportunities for the greater generation is to recognize I haven't faced some of those shadows of my past. And as a result, I haven't matured. Like, it's a really tough one to acknowledge. Like, that in some ways, that young girl asking, is this what life... Like, people throwing stuff at her is because she was a threat, that she was asking questions they wished they'd had the courage to ask. I think there's a lot to be said in that, George. Yeah, it really is. And I think at the other end of the spectrum, yeah, as people get older, they're afraid to ask questions. Yes. And, and yeah, they're afraid to question where, the, because, yeah, there's then... Well, it might shatter know, the identity. It, like, exactly. I mean, like, it, it might do that. And it also, sort of, you know, is this all I've managed to achieve? Yes. Kind of, uh, and I think, so I, think, kind of thing. I think this is the thing, is how can we, 
or it feels like it feels like what a what a sacred opportunity to say yeah, look of course like of course it fucking hurts to say is this all I might have achieved or whatever mm. but actually like you, you could live to a hundred you've got literally an entire life ahead of you how about we ask those questions now in a supportive environment where we're all just as vulnerable and like stripped bare as each other yeah but from that place is truth is honesty and therefore is real power um yeah and so that feels like it feels really important to acknowledge that we are in such desperate need of eldership but what we have is a lot of adolescents in old bodies and how do we support them to mature their inner world so that they can step into true eldership and it's also how do we actually support the people who are elders yes yeah to to step forward and assume their you know their their role yeah you know, to a large degree i look at my mum you know, and yeah. my mother phenomenal she'll be 87 and yeah probably kill me for saying this on yeah. her but she'll be 87 next month yeah um and uh, and she's still teaching people she's still learning yeah and she's still teaching people yeah and uh, and looking out for people i mean it's just a remarkable yeah. woman really to be quite frank yeah a great example for me but also um, we'll have to have to challenge that like why would your mum kill you for saying she's 87 like that you know the, no. the, 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 the implicit like that, that there's something wrong with that right that actually no, 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 incredible no. i, I um, think uh, that's the yeah, that's actually me yeah, mm-hmm. that i shouldn't mm-hmm. have been saying but yeah interesting so yeah very rich conversation and so if you're listening to this at some point perhaps over the weekend once we publish it or at any point we'd love to hear your thoughts feelings responses on this because this was very much spontaneous i kind of i was traveling up on the train to see mike and these thoughts and you know ideas were percolating and i was just like well let's just you know mike and i are best when we bounce off each other in conversation and we mm. typically we we both find we have pieces of the jigsaw like you know the number of times you said that oh this literally the last 24 oh, hours you know i'm having to resist going to the computer and looking for yeah, the things yeah, to show you yeah. because there's a couple of other things that, yeah. you know that i saw there was a, a, a coach yeah. of some sort i can't remember you know a woman that was you know, watching on instagram this morning just yeah. you know, a reel on instagram she was talking about that exact thing about you know like yeah how you were taught or how you were treated as a child is then reflected in how you're treating your children and uh yeah really yeah. and I, I want to find it because yeah. you know like, and and what is you know what is the what is the kind of generation upon generation impact of that collectively right if we think about that it's like how you were treated as a child is how you will treat your child right mm. so if your mum and dad were fun like traumatized in a way like we thought covid was bad right yeah but imagine you know every night the air raid siren goes off and you don't know if you're you're going to be there in the yeah, morning right make it. um yeah, it's... like the the level of fight or flight that that would have been coded in your system like the neurochemistry that that would have created Are in you your system living on adrenaline all yeah. the time george uh, i mean like yeah and, and therefore your capacity to sh- like i know this for myself like i have none of that and yet there are times when I'm t- like I'm totally overwhelmed in terms of being able to be open-hearted with my children because I've got nothing left. Mm. And imagine imagine living your entire life with I've got nothing left on some level, right? But it being so it being so um, commonplace that you think that's what reality is. And for such a long time yeah. as well. I mean, the Second World War, six years, yeah, six years, and then the knock-on effect of it. Yeah. Yeah, it went on for another 12, 15 yeah. years. And the, I guess the whole rationing and the, the, well, the, the scarcity, the the scarcity well, that was the, encoded the, because the of that. The rationing and yeah. even, even the, the constant reminders, because, you know, like, as a child, uh, when I was 10, 11, so in the late 60s, early 70s, moving to Plymouth, there were still bomb sites all over Plymouth. Right. Yeah, they've since been built on. But I mean, like, yeah, you had, um, you had that sort of reminder of something that had happened 20 years yeah. previously yeah. all around you huh. still. It's like the, the scars were on the landscape. <coughs> Absolutely, not but, literally. But, but what, we, what we still have, perhaps, are the scars on the kind of psyche scape. Oh, they would be, but um, shadow of a doubt. And I guess the question is now, like, you know, so it's almost like this young girl, in asking, is this what reality is meant to be, mm. was poking some of those scars well, sure. well, and yeah. all those wounds. And um, so... Yeah, because there's also at the other end of this. I mean, like the yeah, those older people that yeah, that, that that have the regrets. Yeah, 
Wish I'd been a punk rocker. Wish yep. I'd been a you know yep. a YouTuber or whatever. Um, instead of you know going to work doing what I did. You know, yeah, it's always it the top the top five deathbed regrets. Like no one says, oh, I wish I'd worked more. You know, yeah, so. I wish I'd spent more time yeah. in the office. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. yeah. Well, as you can see from that little kind of coda, um, you know, Mike and I do love vibing off each other. So please do let us know your thoughts, your feelings. This feels like a really rich seam that we've just begun tapping into and we'd love to get your take on it. All right.